A person holds a tray of rice with a strange head singing. He carries it to a couple and comes in between them as they fight because of their lack of children. The man hums a contagious melody and walks around the area, petting the head of a person who is playing an instrument. The area is weird, it seems like a village-like place. The man carries the plate to what looks like a makeshift dental clinic and watches as a man pulls out a tooth from a man. The tooth was obviously decaying so it makes sense to pull it out. An old man rides a carriage with flowers and thinks about a scenario, but he gets interrupted by his children, including the same one who was seen during the start of the scene. They stop the man, tie him and bring him back. His children express how it is a disappointment that their father goes after another woman right after their mother died. During the evening, a girl sits in her small room, and a woman and another girl come inside, carrying a white wedding dress. The girl says she hates the color, but the idea of dancing intrigues her. Her mother tells her to put the dress on and the girl agrees, only if her mother and sister leave. Outside, the old man's children, with their unruly appearance, seem to be musicians. They are told to sing lively songs because the bride is not that keen on getting married. One of them has to use the restroom and looks for a spot. While searching, he comes across a girl singing in her room. He recognizes the tone to be the one he sings as well. He unsurely sings back and the two smile while humming. Someone calls for her and she goes quiet, while the musician leaves. He runs back to his brother and hugs all the musicians. Piraz, the man who hum tells everyone to sing and play instruments well tonight. The wedding begins, it is a simple country wedding. Piraz looks for the girl among the dancing crowd but does not find her there. He does not know that the girl who interested him is the one who is getting married tonight. Inside the room, the girl gets ready and her groom comes to see her. She compliments his suit and he tells her that he put it on for her. She then stares him in the eye and asks if he would do anything for her. He says he would. She randomly starts humming the same tune she was humming when Pira saw her, and asks her groom to sing it for her. He tries to, but it seems there is no melodic bone in the man's body. He lets out an offbeat sound that is painful to hear. The girl laughs out loud, making her groom frown. She tells him he sounds like a donkey. He takes it as an insult and tells her to watch her mouth because he is her husband now. She continues laughing hysterically. The man tells her mother to teach her daughter some manners. Outside, Piraz sings with his brothers. Just then, the bride and groom enter the area, and Piraz and the girl's eyes meet. Everyone around her starts calling her a lunatic, and she lets go of her husband's hand walking toward the musician in a daze. Behind them, the whole event is filled with fights because some guests called the girl crazy. Piraz and the bride walk towards each other and stare at each other without a single word, smiling wide at each other crazily as the musicians keep singing an upbeat song, and while the guests continue fighting and throwing things around. Someone hits Piraz at the back and he faints. In the next scene is the girl sitting back in her room with her family members fighting in her room. Her groom is holding a gun and tries shooting her, but they are stopping him. In the end, he does not shoot at her, but he does take a pair of scissors and cuts the girl's long hair. She doesn't seem to care, she plays around with her hair. The next morning, the girl's groom rides the musician's cart, and Piraz's brother consoles the man, telling him it does not make sense for the girl to be a virgin, and then suddenly she is about to give birth. It seems to be the reason she is being treated so horribly. The girl rides a horse attached to the cart, looks at Piraz who is passed out, and tries to wake him up by humming. It does not work out. The cart stops in the middle of the field, and the musician bids goodbye and good luck to the groom, who takes his bride away. Piroz wakes up and immediately asks Hagir, his brother, for the girl, who is being taken back to her father. He tells his brother that the girl is the one for him, that he loves her and she loves him. Hagir tells Piroz that the girl turned out to be impure, but Piroz does not seem to mind. He lets out a pleasant cry and exclaims that her heart is pure. His brother gets excited at the idea of Piroz marrying the girl as well and they go back to their village to get their father's blessing before asking her father for marriage. They quickly go home and untie their father. They tell him that Piraz has fallen in love with a gazelle. At the news, his father agrees to go to her house to ask her father for her hand. Meanwhile, the sad groom takes the girl to her father, and tells him that his daughter has brought him shame, and her father says that Sumbul is his daughter, and he will be the one to take care of their honor. The next day, Hagar shaves his brother's face, getting him ready for the proposal. He tells the crowd of people that the girl is Sam and Aga's daughter. The village people travel happily while singing to the girl's house. Meanwhile, at Sumbul's house, her father drags her to a warehouse and attaches chains to her feet, leaving her there. Her mother who is still there asks her who did this to her, and why she soiled their honor. But she does not understand what her mother is saying. At Sam and Aga's house, Murs, the father, and the village sing, as a way to propose. But the message is not clear, making Saman snap at the crowd. Finally, Murs asks the old man for his daughter's hand. The man says he understands, it then he calls his sons over, throwing punches. They go home, beaten and disappointed. Sumbul, alone in the warehouse with a lot of haystacks plays with her clothes, 
the hay, and anything she can find. Murr sits with his grandchild and makes him write a poem about flowers. Hogger comes to him and beckons him over using the name Dilo. Dilo is the name of the person Murr seems to be in love with. His sons have spent a long time trying to persuade him that she is either dead or away. Hogger tells his father that he has brought her to him. Murs has tears in his eyes as he kisses his son's forehead with glee. Hogger says that Dilo is sick, and he can see her and talk to her, but cannot touch her or hear her. If he touches her she will die. Murs goes to the place where Dilo is. It is a rag doll. But Murs does not seem to notice. He asks to be left alone with her, and welcomes her. Piras watches his father talk to a doll and cry. He walks away with his shoulders slouching. At night, Piras walks alone with a candle through the area, coming across his father, who is playing an instrument in front of Dilo. Murs reads a poem he made himself and continues playing. Pira sits down beside his father, asking if he feels relieved. He takes a deep breath and asks what he will do now that his proposal was rejected. His father tells him to visit the girl and if she loves him, she will go along with him. He gets up with newfound motivation and as dusk hits, he rides a motorbike and reaches Sumble's house. He sneakily walks while singing the tune that attached him to her, and hopes that she will sing back. She hears him and sings back, he finds where her voice is coming from and climbs on top of the roof. He opens a little window at the top and makes his presence known. She smiles up at him happily, but tells him to hide when she hears someone come inside. It is her father and brother. They are talking about taking her life and making it seem as if she killed herself. Piras accidentally makes a noise, which makes her father leave. He tells her that they will elope and that her family cannot do anything to her. Just then, her brother comes inside with a gun, but gets spooked again thinking she is possessed. He tells Sam and Aga about this, and he takes his family to see if it is true. They see her playing with her own shadow, and ask to get Kalender, the exorcist from Piraz's village. The boy runs back, telling Kalender what will happen. The other people will call him for an exorcism. Hearing what Piraz did, Kalender teases him. But back on topic, he seriously proposes a solution. They will give her a potion that will kill her only for a day, then she will be able to marry him. Piraz hugs Kalender. Later, he tells Sumbul of the plan, and after hearing about it, she agrees. At night, Kalender visits Sumbul and says he will get rid of the demon. He walks inside slowly to the girl dressed as a bride. She smiles at him while looking at Kalender, who starts to loudly sing something and gives her a potion. Piraz watches from above, smiling at his gazelle. Kalender comes outside and scares her family by telling them that she is possessed. In the warehouse, Sumbul has collapsed, while Piraz sleeps above her on the roof. The next morning, Sumbul's mother comes inside and cries over her lifeless body. The rest of her family arrive and see the bottle of pesticide. Her father mercilessly say that she deserved it. They go to bury her. Piraz reaches the cemetery later, apparently because he fell asleep at a crucial time. He desperately sings the tune over all the graves, not hearing an answer immediately. But after singing for a bit, he finds her inside one of the graves. They drive back on his motorbike, her hugging him from behind. Piraz brings her to his father, who blesses her and calls her his daughter, welcoming her to their family. Sumbul smiles, now with her lover. A woman comes inside and makes sure Sumbul is here willingly. She tells the young girl she will bring her clothes, because Sumbul is wearing rags. They try to kiss, but two times they get interrupted. Finally, alone, Piraz pecks her lips, taking his jacket off her. The woman comes back inside with clothes, and helps her change. Turns out, she is Hagir's wife. Hagir's son runs to his father and tells him that he saw Piraz with the girl he wanted to marry. The men of the village take Piraz to a tent, and express their fear of them getting in trouble. But Piraz says he could not have let her die. They finally accept what he did and sing to express their acceptance of their wedding. At night, the wedding is held. The couple takes their vows and everyone claps for them. Kalender declares them husband and wife. Kalender then reads an Islamic prayer, al fatiha and everyone says Amen. At night, the couple makes love as some children sit outside and play instruments all night. The next morning, Hagir has a customer at his clinic. The customer sees some bull and claims that she looks familiar. But Hagir hides it, saying she is Fari's daughter. At first, he doesn't pay attention. But later on, he takes Saman and his sons to Sumbul's grave. They find it empty. This is bad, they now know where Sumbul is. Murs plays his instrument by Dilo, who is actually a doll. But he sees an actual person talking to him. He is hallucinating. He gets close to her and kisses her hand. But when he looks up, he sees that it is actually a doll. He cries and sobs, walking away from the rag doll. He cannot believe it, he shakes and takes deep breaths cursing at his kids for doing this to him, not realizing the ache in his heart. He comes close to the rag doll again and lights a match, telling the doll to let him die with her. The small tent burns. The next morning, Hagir's son sees the burnt tent, and running to tell his father, who quickly gets up. Turns out, Murs did not burn with the doll, he takes her and rides in the carriage with her. He is delusional, believing the doll to be his beloved. Murs carries the doll to a big tree with two graves and lays it down in a grave, 
Getting into one beside her, someone comes to Piraz with the news that Saman and his men are coming for him. They will kill the entire village. There are two big problems happening at the same time. Hagar asks his son, Neder, to check the place where their father has built graves, believing that he will be there. And he is, he is there, reading a poem to Dilo and gets ready to die with her. Just then, Neder comes running to his grandpa, telling him that Saman and his men are coming. Hearing this, Merz takes the doll and rides his carriage back home. Back in the village, the whole community is distressed, saying that Piraz will get them all eliminated. Merz arrives and thinks up a solution. He tells Piraz and Sumble to take a raft with everyone while he will distract Saman. After all the preparations, the son asks his father to go with them, but the old man is adamant about staying in the empty village with Dilo. The family cries as they leave the delusional man alone. They give the old man his kemane and leave sadly, knowing that Saman will put him to sleep. In the end, Sumble begs Merz to go while she will stay because the people who are coming are after her. But he says that she is still young, and has her whole life ahead of her, while he has lived his. She kisses both his hands and hands him a beautiful vivid flower from the ground. He sends her off while she cries and runs. He puts the red flower on the doll's head. Pira is in Sumble, along with several others ride to the raft. Meanwhile, Saman's men finally reach the village where Murs is seated alone with the doll, playing a tune. He asks Murs where his daughter is, but Murs exclaims that his son loves Sumble and God knows what mountain they are crossing at the moment. It is weird to think that the only reason Sumbal's family is trying to find her is so that they can put her to eternal sleep. The villagers follow a very old-fashioned and unconventional principle known as honor killing, which is completely legal to them. However demonic of an act it may be, Saman aggressively points a gun at Murs, threatening him and telling him that he will shoot. But Murs begs to sing one song for Sumbal's father, and hopes that it will soften his cold heart. He sings about his son's heart and about the two lovers, and Saman shoots. In the raft, the villagers hear the gunshot, and an air of grief surrounds them, realizing what has happened. Sumbul tells Piraz to go back and honor Mur's sacrifice. He turns to his brother and asks to go back. No matter what happens, they should give their father a proper burial. They go back and lay his lifeless body with the doll, adorning him with flowers. By his grave, Piraz holds his father's instrument keeping it above Mur's chest. They also lay the doll right beside him. By the big tree, the family stands, praying for the old man who gave his life up. While they are going back, Sumble hears the sound of an instrument playing. She turns around and starts singing a song. Her voice is soothing and beautiful. Everyone watches her before they join the song, singing along. They see the doll and Mur's getting out of their graves and dancing to the song. Looking at what they are seeing, they smile happily with tears in their eyes. Mur's finally looks happy, as he dances away towards the sunset. 